Welcome to Whose Turn Is It Anyway, a podcast all about our gaming group and our ever-growing obsession with cardboard. I'm JP. And I'm Curly. And together we're launching another expansion pack episode to introduce a very special guest, Dan Apsey, who's behind the 24-hour board game marathon event. How are you doing, Curly? Yeah, really well, thanks, mate. Um, everything's going well in my life. Plenty of gaming done over the last week or two. So You've been at it hard, right? Yeah, I have been at it really hard, actually. But, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. thankfully my wife's a gamer as well, so I get away with it for quite a lot. Yeah, and my wife's a midwife, so she's never here. So either way, we <laughs> both get works. what we want. <laughs> that works. <laughs> that sounds really bad. We both get what we want. <laughs> I do like spending time with my wife, in case she's listening. I was going to say, Shell, definitely listen to this one. <laughs> Shall we get on with the show and get uh, Dan on? Yeah, definitely. Cool. So welcome, Dan, to the show. It's great to have you uh, here with us, and uh, yeah. Hello, it's good, good to time. be here. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Oh, anytime, anytime, mate. So for those that don't know who you are, Dan, if you want to give everybody and our listeners a brief introduction, uh, who sure you are, thing. what you're all about. I am Dan Apsey. I am the lead uh, organiser and founder of the 24-Hour Board Game Marathon UK, which is a 24-hour uh, live streaming uh, event that happens in Somerset. Uh, and we raise money for Cots for Tots uh, Bristol uh, by playing board games for 24 solid hours. Absolutely. And it's a, a fantastic event and a fantastic cause. And we're dying to, to get into the nitty gritty with you but I think before we uh, jump into all of those questions we always ask our guests this don't we Curly so definitely what's your favourite game I have many games that I love but my biggest biggest love of them all is Anachrony I am a, uh, a slave yes. to anything <laughs> Mind Clash um, when, I see, when I see a, a Mind Clash um, uh, Kickstarter pop up uh, normally it is the, that, uh, that gift that pops up into my head take my money from, mm-hmm. from Futurama as they just, yes. just they have, they have a, a drip feed to my wallet uh, yeah. and I love their components I love um, how heavy their games are I love it how um, it's, their, their games don't feel like a pasted on theme Yes, um, you know you, you, you're, you're getting a full package with, with any Mind Clash game, but especially with Anachrony. I love the theme. Uh, I love kind of a, a post-apocalyptic uh, uh, world, uh, and with a bit of sci-fi in there as well. And one of my favourite mechanics uh, is worker placement. Yeah. Uh, so Anachrony, Anachrony is full of it. I mean, I'm, I'm the same, Dan. Like, uh, I'm, I'm laughing because my wallet winces every time <laughs> the, the Mind Clash go. We've got another new IP for you to. It's not check just out your wallet, life. though. It's, there's other parts that also wince every time. The <laughs> wife she winces. <laughs> it's uh, my brain because I know I'm going to have to go through a, a, a rigmarole of learning it at yes, some point. Yes, <laughs> it's not. It's not. A, it's not a one read through thing. It's a, it's at least no. three, and then maybe maybe a fourth. Yeah, uh, and then you go and find your good mate Dave and ask him, Dave, do us a favour, read this for me, would you, buddy? Because I it's gone right over my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm actually really lucky because I actually love Mind Clash games, especially Anachrony. Actually, same. so we're on the same page with that one. Um, but I'm I, I'm really lucky because I got I got a JP. It's true. So he funds me on the on my Mind Clash nice. so All I have to do nice. is sit there and and watch him order it. Yeah. Every I don't time. have I a don't JP. Don't even have to think about it. But you I, need a JP. Need a JP. <laughs> And JC, JC is a is a good friend of mine who also loves uh, Mind Clash games, and I mean, he lives uh, about five hours away from me. But every time we get together, uh, at least one, if not two, Mind Clash games will come out. So if it's not Anachrony, it'll be Trakirian or or even Cerebria. Yeah, I mean they're fantastic games, and I think we might be doing a a special actually or mm-hmm. an episode focused around Mind Clash in coming up. So I know Davey's quite keen to to kind of do a bit of an exploration and and I'm all over that I'm like yes sign me up for that one because that's amazing Um, cool okay Uh, well other than your favourite game I know you like you said you have many favourites but what what are you really enjoying um, right now game wise what's getting to the table a lot a lot in my house is is, uh, is tapestry I, I love love tapestry um, big fan of, of it being a civilization game but not being a game that kind of takes 10 hours to finish um, yeah. I've played uh, uh, Mega Civ, which is based on the Avalon Hills uh, old um, Civilization game, uh, and um, that takes about fifteen to eighteen hours to finish. 
um, but at least with tapestry, you can get it done in, in, in two hours and, and everyone sort of walks away from the table going, oh, you know, I really enjoyed that. You know, and, it, and it's, um, the thing feels a little bit pasted on, um, but um, the mechanics are there and, and it looks beautiful. And those little 3D miniature buildings are fantastic to look at. Yeah, they're, they're like kind of, for those that don't know, they're like, um, like clay modeled sculpted look feel, aren't they? they uh, yeah. yeah. They're almost Landmarks. like cartoony um, yeah. element to Caricature it. Caricature yeah. versions of buildings and stuff, but they're very, very beautifully done. It's like if up. Charterstone, also another another one of uh, Stonemaier Games, if they if they had Stonemaier Games, if they have had miniature buildings in, in Charterstone, it would be those. Yes. I find that the art style is very similar. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Cool. Any, anything else? Any other games? Um, recently, got to the table uh, Yak uh, by Pretzel Games. Um, it's just a, it's a, a, a medium kind of lightweight uh, game that features uh, Yak meeples. Yes, Yak meeples. Uh, and they're they're pulling uh, carts, and you're trying to make a, like a stone uh, monument. Uh, and this, uh, this, these yaks are kind of go around the table, and you've got to try and trade different resources with these yaks as they're going round. Uh, so we got that to the table recently. Uh, also, uh, a bit of Mysterium as well, actually. I, I love a bit of Mysterium. Um, I, I end up always being the ghost because I'm always teaching new players. But um, it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great game. If you like Dixit, Dixit's quite good for families. Yeah. But if you want to kind of take it up a notch, then Mysterium is, uh, is, is your bag. Yeah, I play that with my family a lot. And uh, I finally got to a position with Mysterium where I've uh, managed to teach my daughter how to be the ghost. Nice. So I can actually be on the other side of the table, which I mm. think I actually enjoy more. Um, yeah, because I quite yeah. like trying to deduce what my daughter is thinking of half the time. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's like, part of the fun, I think. I think yeah, you can try to yeah. work, especially if you're doing it with family, because you almost think that you're going to know what they're going to do because you know them so well, and then all of a sudden yeah. they're like throwing a curveball, and you completely got it wrong. Yeah, and you're like, well, why did you pick that card? It's like, because yeah, there's a line that kind of bends or wiggles like that on on what I've got. All oh, right, okay. Oh yeah, I, I can't see that. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Did Carl. Not get that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, great. Let's get on to the the main event then, shall we? And let's talk do about it. Your, let's talk about your your fantastic twenty four hour board gaming marathon event. So yeah, the, the twenty four hour board game marathon is in its fifth year. Uh, we took um, a, a year out due to COVID. Uh, and then before that, we did um, uh, two physical marathons and a virtual marathon where we raised money for Cotswold Tots Bristol. Um, they help uh, families in need when uh, uh, their their children are, have had a kind of a difficult start to life uh, when they've been born. Uh, yeah. So they end up often get admitted to St Michael's Hospital, and just opposite St Michael's Hospital in Bristol is Cotsford Tops House. So um, if uh, your child was uh, unfortunately um, admitted to the hospital, uh, they will give you a room in Cotsford Tops House, which you can stay in completely free of charge for as long as you absolutely need to, uh, so that you can be right opposite your child uh, when you need to be there and they want you to be there. Mm -hmm. um, but also they also uh, fund a lot of the, um, of the neonatal equipment there. Uh, so um, people like myself will raise money, obviously, and, and all my team will raise money for, for Cots for Tots, uh, and they will donate this money to St. Michael's Hospital to buy the equipment that are needed to keep babies alive. Um, we've raised so far just over eleven thousand pounds in the uh, in the events that we've done already. Wowzers! Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, still climbing. Um, we love doing it. It's it's a great event. It's 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 a great fun. It's a great atmosphere. Um, we we try and encourage people of of um, of any kind of gaming ability. So someone who want to play something like Mind Clash and sit there for hours, or someone who's even just happy putting some blocks in Jenga. You know, like whatever whatever it floats your boat. Uh, then we'll have it and we'll and we'll do it. And also we've got a, a dedicated bunch of volunteers who will teach people all day, uh, and they'll teach uh, at, at any level. So we've got games that are light, but if you want something a bit more meaty, then there, there's somebody there that will sit there and, and teach the whole game for you. Uh, and um, we do it for 24 hours because we're mental. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that gives it quite a unique thing, isn't it? Because like what one, it's fantastic. You're you're doing this for charity, and and the fact that you've raised you know over eleven thousand pounds is just bloody Absolutely amazing, isn't amazing. it? Yeah, Absolutely yeah. amazing. So you know, kudos for 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 getting to that. Thank but you. I quite like the the fact that you've gone. You know what? We will do it as a twenty four hour event. So it's kind of like a challenge as well. It's like, can you keep awake? Can you can you get through it? I know I could do it, but I don't know what I'll be like at the other end. I've signed up for the twenty four hours. So I'm confident, but I might be just totally. Out I of will. Depth, I will honest. see you at 4 a.m 
and see what you say then. I'm a shift worker, or I used to be, so, you know, 4am is... Oh, I'll be knackered. If I, I can't <laughs> see into your soul at 4am, then you've got, you know, you've got more kahunas than me. Yeah. Um, Dan, do me a favour. When it gets to 4am, will out the most heaviest game that you can find... Find Curly and then try and teach him it and watch him cry. I'm up for three. <laughs> Curly, do you know how to play Cerebria? Cerebria, played I've once. played, and yeah. that's about the conflicting emotions. It yeah, reminded that's me of that cartoon heavy. back in the day, right? Yeah. What was it called again? Uh, Inside Out. Inside Out. Oh, Inside Out. Yes. Exactly what I was thinking. Yes. Yeah, so that's so, what yes. it reminded me of. But no, go, going back to what you were saying, Dan, actually, if you want to break me on the 4, 4 a.m., what you want to do is just wheel out Pipeline, which I also notice is in your. <sighs> Your top ten, and that one breaks me. Does. I can't really? play it because it gives me too much AP. Yeah, and really, there's just too many game. close options. It's so good. So just, I, if you want to break me, we yeah. like that one at four AM. That's what you want. I, uh, I'm a big fan of of Ian O'Toole. I love his artwork. Uh, yeah. So anything that kind of Ian O'Toole has designed and and done the artwork on normally catches my attention. Um, Vinos, uh, the Vida Lacerda game, um, a Merv. Uh, the Spice Road game is also very good that he's done. I don't know why, it just, it, it just instantly attracts me. And I love it. Um, do you know what, JP? I got a bone to pick with you. Oh, dun, dun, dun. I got a bone to pick with you because it is now your fault. Because I was going to leave this one. I thought, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to buy this game. I know where it's going. <laughs> you know, you know where I'm going. I do. And it's your fault that I've now got in my possession, upstairs in my collection, a copy of Perseverance. It's your fault. Uh, I mean, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like we said, I'm a big Mind Clash fan, but I stayed away from this one. I thought, oh, it's not going to be for me, I don't think. And then you posted on I've obviously about playing the game, and I thought, well, maybe I'll just take another look. And then before you know it, I, I've made the pledge. It's done. Good on you. Yeah, well done. It's it, it's a beast of a game. That That is the one that broke Curly, episode two, wasn't it? A episode two got me a little bit, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm a mid to heavyweight gamer, but I need to watch the videos first. Yeah. Know? And I didn't watch the video for that one, and that is my biggest regret in a yeah. long time. It just gave me, I was like, oh, Paul Grove came in the last video. He yeah. also did, did the instructional video for, for both episodes one and two. Yeah. He did. Yeah, oh, they're, very, yeah, yeah they're very good, actually. Yeah. 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 That's, how I, that's how I learned. And read in the book because mm. I love it. Mm. Also, I can't. I find that I, I find it difficult to learn from other people teaching me. Um, I've much. I find it much easier to read the book myself and get my own interpretation of it, and then teach others. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 with you to an extent, but I do also like. There's one particular guy that I really like his teaching style, so I can cope with that. Most people I don't get on with, but I think it's John Gets John Games. Gets games yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 he's very his good. His style yeah. is really good. Like yeah. He plays a couple of rounds and all that kind of stuff, so that's right up my alley. Yeah. Cool. We went a little bit of a side there, didn't we? Yeah, we I did enjoyed a little that, bit, though. but you know... Yeah. Talk about games, it's always yeah, fun. Yeah, let's, get back to, let's get back to your event. <laughs> sure. Um, 24 hours. Um, yeah. it's, uh, we, we start at 9am on Saturday, the 30th of July. Uh, and it is in uh, the Edgar Hall, which is in Somerton in Somerset. Um, it's a nice 500 capacity venue uh, where there will be a ton of things going on for those 24 hours. Um, normally between the hours of 9 a.m. and about midnight, it's absolutely heaving. And then you start to see who falls asleep or who goes home because they can't hack it. Now, is it a bit like Squid Game? <laughs> we should we should make rifles in the corner. Yeah, no, it's it, no, you you you, t- you start to kind of go down some of the corridors of the uh, of the hall, and then you start to see people that you saw at the beginning of the day now in a corner with their mouth open and a little bit of drool hanging out and their eyes shut, <laughs> and it's like, oh, now I've seen you awake and asleep, uh, and that happens quite a bit. But um, it's also you would actually be surprised at how many people can actually go through the whole 24 hours and that's also nice to see um yeah. so i find it very very heartwarming and very very fulfilling when i i come into the hall and i look at the hall and you know a few hours have gone by and i can see that it's absolutely rammed you can hardly hear yourself think unless you're at a table obviously but just the overall noise and it's very very fulfilling when you see so many people in there who are giving their time to enjoy the hobby, to, to game, but also to do it for charity as well. It's really, really, it's a really, really nice feeling to see everybody doing that. Um, and um, it's, it's something we hope to, to carry on for many, many years. Um, if you are coming, then um, there is open gaming. There is gaming for uh, all day that people will teach you. 
Um, there is our kitchen who are, who are serving up um, meeple themed foods all day and will keep you hydrated and keep you fed. Um, there is also tournaments in play. So if, you, if you're a big fan of Clask or Hive, then you can come down and, and play those. Uh, there's also a Blood Bowl tournament and a Magic the Gathering Commander tournament. Uh, and we've got our, our infamous live stream. Uh, where uh, the the hosts will will be on there for twenty four hours, going straight through uh, back to back playing playing various amounts of games and, and role playing games as well. Uh, and we hope also that Luke Hector of the Broken Meeple will be down as well. Uh, mm-hmm. He would also be doing a video with us uh, while we're on stream. And also, hopefully, we're going to catch up with Paul Grogan via live stream as well. So we know Luke and we know Paul. So we'll yeah. we'll we'll make sure that we tag them in this uh, episode, <laughs> so we can get them to your event. Yes. So, uh, so when you say like it's obviously twenty four hours, um, like is there like places for people to sleep, or is it a case of they, as you say, they just find a corner, they find a get, corner, get, get a twenty minute like rest, and then they get back into the game, kind of. The, thing. You, I mean, this the venue that we're doing it at this year is a is a new venue. We 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 kind of the the event is kind of grown a little bit, so we can uh, we can kind of go up one space and we can kind of get more room. Yeah. Um, in our older venue, that there, there was many different kind of dark alleys within the hall where you could just literally you know, dip your head for an hour or so and, and, and kind of replenish yourself. Um, personally though, if I did that, I'd find that I'd be, be worse. Yes. I couldn't, I couldn't sleep for an hour and then get back to gaming. I couldn't do it. Um, no. but there are some, there are some kind of quieter areas within, uh, the hall that people can go to if they, if they feel like, Oh, I need to take five minutes because gaming for, for 24 hours or close to 24 hours is a long old time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it would scramble your brain, especially if you're playing all heavy stuff. But we've got there are sofas uh, and seating areas kind of by the, the the front part of the hall where people can come down and, and just have a coffee and chill out. Uh, there's also a couple of other side rooms where uh, paranoia uh, and D and D are being played, uh, as well as um, the live stream as well has a has a live audience uh, p- uh, part of it. So you can come and take a seat up there and and, and literally just watch others uh, gaming as well and be part of the audience. That's fantastic. Sounds like a lot yeah. of variety going on, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, Bings is. I actually signed up for the 2020 uh, 24 hour gamathon, and that ended up going uh, down the pan along with a lot of other things. Unfortunately, so. Um, yeah, that's it. That must have been absolutely gutting for you. The amount of work it, it was, you know, as it was for everybody. You know, you know, needs musts, and you know, if it's that's how it was meant to be, then then so be it. Um, it, it almost does feel like we've kind of hit the reset button on on planning for this year. Uh, as I think people have kind of gotten used to being indoors and they've, they've enjoyed a bit of family time and home life. And, uh, and you know, as an, as an event organizer, it makes you feel a little bit worried that, you know, you hope that the people that came previously will come again and bring their, bring others with them. Yeah. Um, but, um, I'm quite, uh, I'm, I'm quite comfortable at the numbers that we've got coming, uh, as advanced ticket sales. And I also know of loads of other people who are going to be buying in the next few days when they get paid. Don't forget, yeah. buy your tickets. Uh, and then uh, hopefully uh, um, they'll, they'll do that obviously just, just before the event as well. Um, so, so, and also there's loads, loads of people that are going to buy on the door as well. Um, but um, yes, you know, COVID, I think, I think COVID has been a real test for event organizers, especially uh, anybody who's going to organize anything that's close up, like playing board games. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I think the mo- most of the, uh, of the world and the nation can, can move past it and, and get back to some gaming and, and and i love gaming with strangers uh which, yeah. which some people would probably be like oh i'm not too sure about that but to game with somebody else who you don't necessarily know is also a fresh challenge because you, you know you play against your against your friend who kind of you kind of know and anticipate kind of the moves that they're going to make because you've known them for so long but playing with a stranger not only means that you don't anticipate what they're going to do but you're going to make another you make another friend uh, and you can, and you can, you know, and hopefully, I'd like to think that in the previous events that we've done, people have come together who wouldn't necessarily come together, play games, and you know what, they've they've had a chat and they've spoken uh, about gaming beyond the the, the marathons and played on, on games like by a uh, board game arena. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely true. I mean, I've I've gone to some open gaming conventions in the past, and I went on my own, mm. which is always quite a. It's a bit of a nervy thing to yeah. do. I mean, for me, it's not. I'm not too worried because I'm quite extroverted and I quite like. I just like hanging around with people and making an idiot of myself. I'm, I'm not. I'm. I'm an introvert completely. Yeah, sure, Dan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> but it's it's very true. I remember meeting uh, loads of people and and still regularly getting in touch with those and looking forward to you know the next set of conventions and you kind of 
you know, you're meeting new friends, you're meeting new people. It's just, yeah, it's great fun. So I always think you should always try and game with strangers a bit more. Yeah. Um, if you're going to go with your group, like spread out a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. Mix it up. And there's yeah. some people that wouldn't be very comfortable in that. And that's okay. That is, that is totally okay. Um, but also, you know, if you, if you can play with others that you wouldn't necessarily know, then that's always, it's always a good way of meeting new people. Yeah. Do you put any kind of provisions in for, for those people who um, may struggle or maybe thinking, I, I really want to go on my own, but, you know. Uh, no touching of the hair or face. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> beyond that, you, you, you speak to someone who, who is a little bit apprehensive about speaking to somebody else. Um, it's, if you can and you know someone else who's with you, you kind of go, well, do you know what? your personality might gel with this other person who I know who, who is super friendly and would sit there more than happy teaching you something that, uh, that, you, that would interest you. Uh, which, is, which is what we kind of do at the board game marathon is we, we have a, a small bunch of people who will people, they'll literally just stand there and go, do you, you want to play a game? Do you fancy something? You know, or, or, or they'll sit there with something open, ready on the table to play and they'll kind of not summon you over, but just, you know, give it a wave and say, oh, do you fancy giving this a try? And, and try and engage with people that they don't know, yeah. um, but also in a way that they can build friendships with, uh, with others as well. Uh, and then get other people who don't know these people and get them all together and just to play a game. Board gaming is kind of like a religion. Um, you kind of, you know, you you you're kind of recruiting, especially when, when you're dealing with when you're pe- dealing with strangers, is you're bringing people in, and you're um, you're teaching them this thing you're passionate about, uh, and um, it's great. I love it. It's great. Well, we quite often refer to JP as our cult leader, so that's why I made a little face when you said that is uh, exactly what JP is. Yeah, completely. <laughs> um, so it's a bit of a weird mix of a of a introvert and extrovert i'm an introvert with an extrovert job i think becky decided i was my wife that's true yeah and um i had a couple of questions around like you know um primarily busyness like how how busy you you mentioned earlier on that it can be quite a good atmosphere and it's really busy how busy is it because it's not like being so busy that you couldn't sit down that you couldn't get a space at a table no not not at all kind of it's a good question we we the last time we did a physical marathon we had 170 attendees Okay, um, and that was in a venue of about a capacity of about about three hundred. Right. Um, so it was a bit of a squeeze, but people could get to tables, and that's that's totally fine. Um, the venue that this time around we're in a, a five hundred uh, seat capacity, and um, like I said, with because of COVID, we find that we are hitting the reset button on those numbers. So hmm. if we match the numbers that we did last time, I would be absolutely amazed and and super super happy. Um, and, and you know, it'd be great if we do it. I don't think we'll get to those numbers, but you never know. Um, if we did get to that number, it would be totally fine. We would have the capacity to, to, to get everyone to tables uh, and to open game if they want to not you know, join any of the volunteers as we've got the space for it. Uh, my biggest concern is making sure we have enough tables. Uh, and I've counted all the tables and I'm thinking it's going to be okay. Ask me when we're there. <laughs> if we're not, know. I know people. We'll sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> Tables can be provisioned. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, obviously with people being awake for, for that long period of time, like, do you have any kind of, like, what's, what's your funniest story of, of people that have uh, <clears throat> I've kind of gone through that? I mean, you must have a few. I, the, when we did the virtual marathon, we did it via Discord. So we can have all the attendees who were kind of on the live stream on camera. So they were in, so we had like little boxes on the screen and you could see everybody. Yeah. Uh, and JC, if you, if you're listening, I'm sorry, this is going to be, this is going to be you. I'm picking on you, JC. <laughs> JC, I love him to death. Bless him. And he's lovely. But he, we were playing, it must've been about 4 AM. I might be a little bit earlier. I can't remember what we were playing. I think we were either playing Yahtzee, uh, cause it was something super quick or we were playing food chain magnate. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, he was sitting there and you could see his head. He was going and his eyes were getting heavy and he was so sleepy. And then he was gone. He was completely gone. <laughs> and I'm always going, 
look at look at what he's doing and everyone's obviously cracking up laughing because he's there laughing and then you can imagine what expletives come out of his mouth as soon as he realized that we're all laughing at him bless him yeah yeah um (laughs) there was one there was one time when it's on the same stream he went away for a nap because he couldn't hack it anymore bless him then he came back uh and then you could tell he was rubbing his eyes and he, he just got back to sit down and everyone was just going, you're right, JC, he wasn't saying anything. Nothing was coming out of his mouth because he'd just woken up. And there was like a dramatic pause for what felt like a whole minute. And the only thing that he said was, good morning. That was it. That was it. And that summed up JC's marathon. Perfectly. Bless him. And he was there for 24 hours, bless him, but he couldn't quite hack it for the full 24. Oh. Yeah, uh, but he did. He did very well, bless him. Uh, in our in our physical marathon, um, we have a bar uh, that opens up, and uh, in our old venue, the bar was in our live stream room. But the way that the bar people come in is they come in through a side door. Now, when we when we do our live stream, we're we're quite lucky and we're blessed. Is the as uh, IAB crew are able to hire about sixty grand's worth of recording equipment. Um, so they get in lots of state-of-the-art cameras, and we, we basically make a pop-up, almost like a pop-up um, TV studio. Okay. Uh, so the bar people come in the door. They don't see us because they've got bar shutters down on the bar. They pull the bar shutters up, and all they see is this, this weird pop-up studio with a bunch of people around it playing a board game. <laughs> you can imagine what you'd feel like if you were on the receiving end of that and seeing that and just go, what on earth are these people doing? Yeah, uh, and then having to explain yourself <laughs> that was fun excellent out of interest is there going to be anywhere to get coffee there because that's going to be Absolutely. my main I'm going to need that as intravenous so. coffee will be provided my, my, my good lady wife Victoria she, she runs the kitchen uh, all day there will be tea, coffee, bacon sandwiches bacon and egg sandwiches There'll be um, egg related uh, products. Yeah. Egg related products. <laughs> there'll, there'll be there'll be s- s- like steak bakes. There'll be. Calm it down, Dan. I'm getting too excited. Yeah, I know. I know. There'll You're be arousing a, him. You're yeah. arousing him. <laughs> <laughs> there'll be a chili in the evening as well as oh. hopefully a curry as a uh, curry as well. No, uh, exactly. with breakfast in the morning. So yes, you'll be well catered for. Yeah, excellent. I can let you guys know that if you're anyone who's after tickets who is listening to this, July 30th, you know, head to our website, the 24 hour board game marathon.co.uk. That is where you can buy tickets. If you're after a six hour ticket, it's six pounds, 12 hour ticket, 12 pounds, or a full 24 hour ticket, it's 24 pounds. But that money goes to Cots for Tots and saves babies' lives. Yeah, fantastic. And we'll put all this uh, in, the, in the show notes as well so that anyone who's listening can get access to that your website link and and everything to fantastic to, thank to you get so the much tickets and to support the event so. and more than that i'm going to be persuading people few few people to come with me i know Absolutely. i've bought tickets for me and the wife already so uh, excellent thank you yeah. so much for that yeah. great okay um so let's move on to uh, dan the gamer and learn a bit uh, more about you and and kind of what you're about do, so do you know what right dan the gamer dan the gamer I, dan the gamer is the most boringest version of dan that you can possibly ever Why is imagine. That? Why well, is that? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a theatre musician. I like to be on stage. Yeah. Uh, I'm a singer, uh, uh, and uh, I, uh, I have a, an over-the-top job, and that's kind of me. But when I'm sat in front of a game, I'm boring. <clears throat> I'm boring because all I'm doing is sat there. I teach the game. I taught the game. I'm, that's done, uh, and then I'm thinking about my own game. And I just go into my little shell. I'm just, I'm in my element. I'm yeah. 100% happy, focused, and in whatever game I'm playing. And I find I'm very conscious of it that I'm the most boringest person when, I, when I'm like that. I'm not like my normal self. Um, but that's because I'm enjoying myself. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, I'm enjoying what's in front of me. That's, that's Dan the Gamer. You're in your um, mind palace of yeah. trying to work out, right, this is what I've got to do. I've got to do this and do that, which is actually, like, for yourself, it's very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I suppose it's for everyone else watching always, you, they just right. think you're mad. Don't yeah. 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 But that's the thing. The games you seem to like, Dan, do seem to be big thinky ones. So, you know, it's no great big surprise. It's a massive great big puzzle. That's the, the appeal yeah, for me. Yeah, that's the beauty of it, yeah. And, you know, I, I like to play... I do like to play lighter games as well, and but... I, you know, I'd like to play lighter games when I'm trying to introduce new people to the hobby. Yeah. Um, and and you know, because if you if you put, I, I have, I I confess, I have put Venus in front of newbies and scared them away. Mm. Uh, just just don't, you know, don't do it. Um, but um, I did, uh, and, and regretted it. But it's hey, I'm I'm 
if the theme catches me and I know about the mechanics, then then I'm in. Um, and it doesn't. It can be light, it can be heavy, um, but I do prefer more games on the heavier side mm. uh, of the, of it. If, if I if I if I can play a heavier game, I would prefer to. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I mean, so how how did you get in the hobby uh, to start with? Like, what what was your introduction into into this glorious church? Or cult. <laughs> I uh, I've been I've been a a video gamer all my life, um, and and video games is a good step to go from video games to go to board games is a good step, uh, and that is the step that I made. Um, so I am a big fan of Sid Meier's Civilization. Yeah. Uh, also at the He's time. Smiling. Can yeah, smile nice. <laughs> yeah, it's a great game. Uh, I'm also, I was also I still am a big fan of Gears of War. Yeah, uh, and it just so, and also at the at the time, The Walking Dead had just come out on on TV, uh, so all those all those years ago, uh, and when that happened, um, I kind of bought uh, or had bought for me, I can't remember now, but three board games. Um, one was made by Z-Man Games, which is which is the Walking Dead um, comic book uh, board game, mm-hmm. uh, the Gears of War board game by FFG, yeah. uh, and also um, the Civilization board game by FFG, not the latest one, the one before it, the twenty ten one, yeah, the good one. The one uh, yeah, it's the one you've got, Curly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, great, great version, great game, uh, and uh, that kind of started off the foundation for me. I, mean, I always liked kind of games when I was a kid growing up. You know, the dreaded Monopoly. You know that that everyone, everyone always plays that when they're a kid, right? And, uh, and Game of Life, and and and, and that was good. But then um, I kind of took a, 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 I suppose I grew up, I suppose, and didn't really kind of play any more games until I found these video game. Um, games that had board game adaptations mm-hmm. um, got them got friends to the table and the rest is history I've just, I've just built up my collection from there and, and I've been along for the ride ever since yeah no I uh, I completely agree I, I made the transition in, into board gaming with XCOM um, oh great game that's, which... that's on the live stream this year by the way oh is it 4am 4am Brilliant. Oh, that's, a, that's a fast thinking game for 4am you are punishing sir. Yeah, that's why I am punishing the people who were playing it <laughs> I'm not playing it. I'm not playing it. It's not, no, but not you me. can laugh at the people who are. Yeah, that's why Absolutely. it's going to be entertaining. Absolutely, that's why I've done it. Yeah. Um, draw, they, draw a they, crisis card. Uh, uh, do this. Uh, I, I can't, can't do function anymore. <laughs> um, I've done it deliberately. They've gone. I had the conversation last night with my live uh, live stream hosts last night about the schedule. Finished the schedule off. Uh, I said 4 a.m. XCOM, and they're like, "Yeah, okay, that sounds great." Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, Do you understand what you're getting in for? No, uh, not really. No, so you're gonna like, yeah, it's gonna be yeah, great. Yeah. It's gonna be fantastic. It's gonna, be, it's gonna make great viewing. It's yeah, ab- absolutely. Definitely. Have Have you found um, with with your kind of transition from uh, kind of video gaming to board gaming that I mean, do you still play video games now? If you do, you just find that they don't scratch the same itch as board games do. Good question. I I do play video games a lot still. Uh, I find that my video game habits and tastes have changed a lot Mm. over the years, but even more in the last couple of years. I recently sold my PlayStation 5 because it doesn't get any use. Um, I actually prefer to sit... I've been a console gamer all my life, all through my childhood and all through my my, uh, young adulthood. Yes, I'm 36. I'm not that old. Uh, But uh, I... He's um, a baby. I'm a baby, right? 36, yeah. Uh, And... um, I I've got a PC sort of in the last couple of years, and now I just I, I PC game. That's it. And the games that I'm playing on the PC, unless it absolutely captures my interest from the get go, are mostly games that are either last generation or even the ones before that. You know, what, I, find, I might as well be talking to myself. I was going to say this is yeah. you, isn't it? <laughs> Apart from the PS5, my have we become best friends? I don't know. <laughs> it's quite just possible. <laughs> But I'm exactly the same. I, I was console. I don't think I've turned my console on in six months. No. I think something like that. And uh, got PS5. Uh, a bit Xbox. Xbox. Uh, yeah. yeah. See, yeah, the new Xbox Series X. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I haven't turned it on in six months since it basically yeah. came out near enough. And yeah, I've spent my whole time on my PC playing. I must admit, and now that I think about it, I've never really thought about it, but it does bleed into it. Strategy games primarily. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it's a similar sort of. All right, they're not similar, but maybe mindset wise, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, but you know your civilizations, heroes of might and magic, and you know red alerts and command and conquers, all these kind of games. So yes. yeah, it's interesting to hear that you've made had the same journey as pretty yeah. much I have. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I like games with strong with a strong theme when it comes to board games, but also with video games, it has to have a strong theme for it to grip me. Um, I can say quite publicly and openly that Death Stranding changed my life. 
Uh, absolutely phenomenal game. Um, and that is the only game, only video game in a very, very long time I've gone. That was incredible. Um, I, there are games out there that are like, okay, they're great. But um, it's the video game, kind of video game tastes are, are, kind of, are kind of similar to board games where you play, you can play a board game enough and you play a video game enough and you just, unfortunately, you get tired of it or you get bored of it and you move on unless it's something that grips you tremendously mm. and unfortunately with my i'm very i'm very much a slave to cult of the new when it comes to board gaming uh and if something is shiny uh and it's strong on mechanics and looks great i'll get it and if Hello. i'm not if i haven't got enough money to get it then i'll sell some board games that i know are wilting in the corner i feel sorry for them they're crying but they're going to go to new homes and get love somewhere else mm -hmm. to buy the new shiny one uh, unless the cycle continues Absolutely. And I asked the question because like, I think for me personally, I used to be a massive Xbox gamer, constantly played anything, did, you know, hours and hours on it. And, and I've just like literally transferred the electronics to cardboard now. But I, I go back every now and then I think, oh, yeah, let's play this. Let's play that. And then I just sit there and I think, can't be bothered. I just, I don't know, it's really weird. I just, I just can't mm. be bothered with this anymore. Yeah. Sometimes, though, sometimes when you go to video games and you play an adaptation of a video game and they've made a board game of it, it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, or doesn't work, in my opinion. I mean, I'm a massive Resident Evil fan. Yes. Um, I have been since the first game ever came out when I was a child yeah, and the dog too. smashed through the window, you know, uh, and so iconic. And I, I just played Resident Evil 1 Remake uh, the GameCube remake on PC and finished it recently. And that game's what came out in 2002. Yeah. Um, still playing it now. Um, but then they made the board game adaptation of Resident Evil 2 and 3. And wasn't a big lover of it. No. Even, even with the theme of Resident Evil. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of co op games. A co op game has to grip me, otherwise, I'm not along for the journey. Nemesis is fantastic. Um, it really is a really good, strong, thematic, cooperative game, and I can see why everybody loves it. Um, but with co-op, the, the, the theme has to be, in my opinion, the theme has to be really strong. Yeah, I agree. Um, otherwise, I'm, I just can't. I can't see it. Like, I, I find that games where you either win all together or lose all together, that appeal it doesn't it doesn't have. I don't have doesn't have that appeal for me mm. um, unless. And this is something that's like a almost like a struggle, but it feels so rewarding when you all get there at the end. Yeah, you feel like, oh, do you know what? I can play that again. And Nemesis is one. Yeah. Uh, this War of Mine is also another one. And the new, yeah, yeah, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. <laughs> the struggle is real, but it's great. Yeah. Uh, it's like the, the, this War of Mine is depression in a box, um, but it's fantastic at the same time. Uh, and Frostpunk, which obviously is coming out uh, via Kickstarter fulfillment very very soon, which unfortunately got that. It, no. Oh, I thought you went for that. No, I thought about it and decided against it because it's not my theming. It seems to be yours, Dan. I love it. Yeah, I love that kind of thing. I would say um, post-apocalyptic is not my theming. I like futuristic, but I'm more of a Halo sci-fi rather than... We're no longer friends, Kelly. Kind of... Sorry. You, you just broke up. I mean, <laughs> oh, no. I'm it's not ready. It's the quickest best besties that have ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, I also love sci-fi as well. I'm a big sci-fi fan. Uh, and and like you know, you said Nemesis. Uh, Nemesis is, is a perfect, great sci-fi oh, co-op game. Uh, it is really good. I didn't. I haven't played Lockdown yet. Um, we I, did. I, we we got that to the table the other well, last week. Was it? Yeah, yeah, it was. That was punishing. If you think the normal one's punishing, my yeah. Life. But we were learning the mechanics of the the facility base on Mars, mm. and essentially. You know, there's there's this thing called power, and you need to move it around and sort it out. And if you don't kind of get on top of the power or activate the backup generator, then you know things keep going dark, and then the little uh, excuse my French, but the little shits come out and really start uh, punishing you, which is kind of what we did. And <laughs> realised that actually we probably should have worked together a little bit more. I'll, I'll be honest, Dan. Out. Mistakes were made. <laughs> <laughs> we all got tired. But we had a good. We had a good laugh. I must say. Yeah, the bit where well, we did get absolutely ruined. Bit where we all died. I think you got out and uh, you were in the pod. You were safe, and then Tambo. Another one of our players managed to get to the, uh, the literally the exit room before they went into the bunker, and then they got shanked by uh, one of the night stalkers in an event, and he just killed him. Uh, which in turn, I think, meant meant that you. Oh no, we went to the contingencies, which is this new mechanic of 
basically depends on what the, the corporation's going to do at the end of the round. Mm. And yeah, it says kill everybody in these pods, which you was in. So there was them. a one in seven chance of me losing. And again, the one in seven case. <laughs> of, of, course, course. of course. Of course. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's all right. I, I actually, I'd rather Tambo get killed at the end there in a really funny way than me win, <laughs> to be honest. At least, you got, at least you got that satisfaction from it. That's it tells exactly stories, right. doesn't it? That's the yeah. point yeah. with that kind of game. You've always got a story to tell whenever you play it. Always is different. And, and How did you get on with mansions out of interest? Mansions? Yeah, mansions. Mansions, mansions of Madness. Madness. Yeah, because that I... seems like a really theme-heavy co-op game that yeah. doesn't seem like the theme would be up your street, maybe. I, I, like, I like HP Lovecraft stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I like... Mansions of Madness first edition. Uh, I had a lot of it and played it quite a bit, but it was not very easy to get to the table with my gaming group. Um, now, I, I, my, that was you, you're going back quite a few years when the first one came out, and my gaming group was quite small. Uh, my gaming group now is significantly larger. You know, a lot of thanks to the event that uh, that, that, that we do. So you know, it's not it's not it's not as difficult now to find gamers to play with, which is great. Um, I reckon. I've not got the second edition, but I would revisit it, and I probably would enjoy it because I, I do like the theme. I'm not sure about the app-driven side of it. I'm not. Um, I'm not dead against app-driven games uh, at all. Uh, Lucky Duck Games bring out. I've got some fantastic mm-hmm. app-driven games. XCOM, off by FFG, is, is an app-driven game. Um, there was a game that came out years ago called Gollum Arcana. Um, that was. Uh, I can't remember who was the designer now, but that that was an app-driven game where you had a board with. Um, fully painted miniatures and these miniatures had a base with stickers on and these these stickers were readable by a pen and you would scan these these um, miniatures and move and animate and attack each other within this app which sounds crazy but it worked and it was really really good um, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite I'm quite for app driven board games providing they're done well yeah. uh, I don't mind a mixture of the technology that's okay Cool. Okay, so let's move on to uh, our kind of niche number one section. So, Dan, we did an episode um, pretty pretty previously, depending on when this is going to be released. So, uh, <laughs> in the, the magic of podcast release versus actual time is always yeah. a, a mystery. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, but yeah, we did an episode around niche number ones, which is kind of your number number one game in really niche circumstances. So, what we've got, we thought we'd gamify this a little bit. I've got a. A very uh, pretty dice from Super School Pinball, which is sat right next to me, which is very uh, kind of pink and blue. And we've got six niche number ones. I'm just going to roll the dice. I'm going to see what comes up, and then we're going to ask you the question, mate. So let's do it. Are you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. We're gaming. Here we go. Right. First roll is number six. Curly, do you want to do the honors? Yeah, absolutely. So number six, favorite game that you're actually going to get rid of? Anything new. <laughs> <laughs> Anything as, new. as in favorite games to get rid of is it to fuel his uh, obsession of to fuel of, my, my, so my maybe, addiction. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't get to the table enough, or your group doesn't get on with it, or you know, pick your reason really. But uh, yeah, favorite it's game very, that you're actually going to get rid of. It's very difficult. I do you know what I, I've ummed and ahed many times about Trakirian, and people are like, why, why? I, mean, I love Trakirian, brilliant, but I can't get it to the table enough. Yeah. Because it's so heavy. Have you ever played Tapirian with the the, the Dark Guards Academy expansion? No, we've not done that yet. We did. We it, uh, we did the um, what's it? The Dark Alley. Da- 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 yeah, that's kind of base base Tracherian with that. Yeah. Um, Im- imagine imagine someone drilling a hole into your temple <laughs> uh, for four hours, and then after they've done that, they're probably going to pull it out a little bit, and then maybe go back in for another hour. <laughs> That's that's how Trakirian is like on that level. Now I love Trakirian; it's beautiful. I backed the original Kickstarter years ago when it came out. The big box is amazing. Um, I've got a big box available in our in our board game raffle. Seamless plug there. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. uh, and um, thank you to Minecraft for that, by the way. Uh, and um, but yeah, I can I can hardly get it to the table, which is a real shame. Yeah, we we had a good game of it on last Friday, didn't we? Yeah, it's your kind of first game, Curly, and. Uh... I played a, a couple solo because uh, I recently got it with my Perseverance Pledge. And uh, yeah, I, I, I bloody loved it, to be honest. I was thinking, why did I not get this earlier? Yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a 9 or 9.5 out of 10 for me. I was incredibly it's, impressed. It's, yeah, it's so it's so good. Um, I remember when it first came out, and I remember people like Tom Vassell of the Dice Tower not enjoying 
the game very much because I don't think he got his head around the resource element of it because he thought that he would spend the resources rather than accumulate them and have a, yeah. a supply of them. Yeah. Uh, uh, and he couldn't understand that concept. But I think um, I think the game has been a grower for many, many people uh, and it's now become a modern classic, in my opinion. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. And, and it's so pretty to look at. I love the artwork. Yeah, it's, and it's, so, it's just great. It's great. Cool. Ready for the next one? Let's do it. Uh, number three, Curly. So number three. Your favourite game that needs upgrading? Wingspan. Okay. That's an interesting choice. Yeah, definitely. I love Wingspan, but I find that when you've played Wingspan about 20 times, which I easily have, the dice tower looks like the dog's eating it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. That's fair. I mean, come on. That's fair. You know, no, you, you put this thing together, you hope that it stays, uh, you know, uh, in its original rigidity, you put dice down it, and one's ends up down Watford Gap. <laughs> it don't stay in the right place. Uh, you know, I, uh, I I think that needs a, an upgrade for myself to buy upgraded components for it. Yeah, sure. Um, mm. There are many different laser cut box uh, dice towers that you can buy for it. There are many different components that you can buy for it to make uh, the resources better. Um, also, you've got the neoprene mats that make it really, really nice as well. Jamie, put those in as standard you won't because you just won't but you really should uh and uh it's it's a it's a pretty game but you can make it even prettier and if i was to upgrade one it would be that yeah well speaking to the converted here to be honest because we have just upgraded our uh our wingspan not the dice tower itself but the actual components nice yeah you've got nice. the different birds and, and yeah. resources and all that kind of stuff yeah so we got birds for the you know the the Set turns the that you take yeah and we've got yeah upgraded resources to little. Did ones. you buy the speckled eggs? Uh no. I there was a really I, good Etsy store that we went to and ordered a whole bunch of stuff. To be honest. <laughs> nice. I nearly did buy the speckled eggs at the UK Games Expo. I was in front of Games Law stand. Now I did buy some things from Games Law. So if you're listening, don't worry. I spent my money with you. <laughs> now I looked. I looked at the speckled eggs on the table, and it felt like the time-space continuum stopped for what felt like a whole minute. It didn't. It was about five seconds. But it felt like it stopped for a whole minute. I looked at these speckled, egg, these speckled eggs and I went, what are you doing? <laughs> Walk on. They're eggs with dots on. Yeah. So if no you problems. really want to, go and get a marker pen and put some dots on your existing ones, you pillow. You could do yeah, that. You could. Or you could just leave them alone. So I literally had the bag in my hand and I went, and I put it back down again. And then left. Um, do, um, do I regret not buying them? No. Will I buy them? No. Do I like them? Yeah. It's, the it's a good job Becky didn't see them, is all I got to say. Really? Yes. Yeah. She's got a snap grade. She yeah, would have snapped definitely. Them. Cool. Right. Time for one more. We'll do one more. Yeah, Ready? Let's do it. Okay, roll those dice. We have got. Um, well, I'm going to roll again because that was a three. We could be here all day, couldn't we? Two. Number two. So, favourite game under £20. Roughly. Rustling Leaves. Rustling Leaves. I've never heard of that. I've never Please heard of that. It's made by tell. Cosmos. Cosmos. Rustling okay. Leaves. Um, it's a new one for me. I, I picked it up at the UK Games Expo, uh, and it's a roll and write, and I'm a bit, a bit of a sucker for roll and writes because nice, most of them are nice and quick. Um, I'm sure that when the Twilight Imperium roll and, roll and write comes out in a few months' time, that we'll all go, that's the longest roll and write ever made. <laughs> uh, but with, um, with Rustling Leaves, it takes about 10, 15 minutes to play. Uh, there's a bunch of, uh, of symbols on the sheets that uh, reflect a certain season. There are four seasons in the box. You're rolling a couple die, and these, these symbols um, uh, on the dice are leaves. So if you roll one that says a two on it, one that says a four on it, you've got to draw... Uh, around this grid of these symbols a two by four box and when you do that you then have symbols that you've just enclosed in this box and then you've got to scratch off certain symbols that will give you points mm. um, and it's, it's a quick thinker it's not difficult um, and you have like six seven eight people playing this game all at once uh, and it's just it's just nice it's pretty to look at um, and it's a bit of fun and, for, and I bought it for 10 quid and I played it at least six times since I've been back from the yeah. from the UK Games Expo and I love it. Great value, isn't it? When you can get a game... Great, actually, great value, great game. And you're you're getting that many plays out of it. I mean, it's just... Love it. Yeah. Good. I, I've been getting into a lot of rolling roll rights. You though. have lately. Like, like I say, yeah. Super Skill Pinball right next to me. Love that. But a pinball game, that's mm. a roll and right. But it works. It's brilliant. Um, but the other one I actually... Uh, got interested in which has just recently been on kickstarter which is the gig 
um, by Brain Crack Games. And well, I think I've seen yeah, that. It's essentially, you're all aspiring jazz musicians. Of course, you are. And, That's right up my street. Yeah, and you have uh, basically all the different instruments that you you play, like the piano and, and bass and all that kind of stuff. And it's kind of real time uh, dice rolling, putting them on song sheets, getting resources, scratching things off, doing this, and yeah, and you kind of creating shapes with your dice on the song sheet, so you can then draw those shapes onto your instrument and get bonuses and scores and stuff. And I thought, oh, this looks that this sounds looks quite different, fun. For a, did you back it? Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, nice. To be fair, we did an episode about Kickstarter and and how it usually stings. I didn't think that's it was that bad. I thought it's quite a good deal they were doing, and even UK shipping because they're um, fulfilled from UK as well. Mm-hmm. It just a thought, big why not? Actually, that does make a big difference. Um, um, sorry, call me or not, but you will not be having my money anymore because you charge an arm and a leg for shipping. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. yeah. Some... I like cyberpunk. I played a bit of cyberpunk, yeah. but I would not back the cyberpunk no. board game because of the postage costs alone. Absolutely. Not their fault. I'm. I. You know. I, I'm. I'm sure. But uh, us poor Brits, unfortunately, have taken the full brunt of that yeah. cost, um, which is a shame. Hopefully, maybe one day it'll be resolved okay. and it won't be so bad. But uh, it's pretty bad. We'll get there. Good. Okay. Well, we'll we'll wrap up the old niche number ones there. So, really, our final question to you, Dan, is kind of what we call planning your turn. Um, so essentially, what are you excited for, apart from obviously your event, because that is the, the the big event in your calendar, but what generally Indeed. What generally are you uh, excited game-wise, anything else-wise um, that's coming up soon? I love doing the, the 24-hour board game marathon. It's great, and it means that I can meet new people and, and bring people into the hobby. But once it's done, I can have a rest. And once I've had a rest... I can get to the gaming table myself and just play some games. Yeah, uh, you know it takes up quite a bit of my time doing the doing the marathon, which I, lo- I love doing it. Um, but when I don't do that, I can get to the table more and I can get some more games in. Um, JP, you know what it's like when you've got a family with, with you know with wife and kids, yeah. and it's sometimes it's very difficult to get to the table when you really want to. Um, but uh, I'm ho- hoping to have a bit more time and uh, and get to the table and just play some play some good games. Yeah, that as many as I possibly can. Balances. I, I get away with a lot is what I'll say. Um, nice. Good work. <laughs> um, so, no, I think we are probably getting towards the end there, Dan. So I just want to say, uh, you know, a massive thank you for your time to sit down with us. No, thank you. And, happy, to be, happy to be on. Yeah, it's been great to, to listen and learn more about your event. And um, I know a lot, a lot of us are really excited to get down and kind of support you. And who knows, getting that audience to start heckling. Uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah, looking forward to meeting you down in real life. Yeah, absolutely. Likewise, likewise. I, I can't wait. It's going to be great. But no, look, we, we wish you all the uh, the success with the event. And uh, we're, we're, Thank more, you both so we're much. more than happy to, to kind of devote this episode to you and, and the event and just kind of promote it because it's just for a great cause, right? And yeah. Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. It'll be great to see you guys there. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Cheers. Thank you. And with that, our board game shenanigans have come to a close. And if you've enjoyed the show, please like, subscribe and review on your podcast player of choice. And if you want to get in contact with us, as usual, we've got plenty of ways to do that. You can email us on players at whosturn.co.uk or you can check out our Facebook page, Whose Turn Is it Anyway Podcast or Instagram at Whose Turn Podcast and of course TikTok at Whose Turn Is It Anyway. And until next time, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.